Member for Kitchener Conestoga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as someone whose faith is at the very core of who I am and influences all of what I do in this place, today's motion is of great importance to me. This is the same for many Canadians. Their faith shapes them and is very important to their everyday life. Places of worship, traditionally seen as sanctuaries, are also places for peace, contemplation, and fellowship, all of which makes the heinous attacks that took place in Quebec City just a few weeks ago that much more disgusting. That is why it is important for members of this House to stand together in support of today's motion that condemns such hatred in Canada and strives to work toward collectively fighting for the freedoms enshrined in our consultation. Mr. Speaker, I neglected to mention that I'll be sharing my time with a member from South Surrey, White Rock. Mr. Speaker, the rights enshrined in our Constitution in Section 2 of our Charter clearly state that everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. Freedom of conscience and religion. Freedom of thought, belief, opinion and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. Freedom of peaceful assembly. And finally, freedom of association. Mr. Speaker, whether it be the most recent attack on Muslims in Quebec City, the drawing of hateful images on Jewish synagogues in Ottawa, or the persecution of Christians in many regions of the world, these acts of hatred toward one another need to be stopped, and it's up to us as elected officials to stand up to this destructive climate. It has long been stated that freedom of religion is one of the most basic freedoms a society can give to its citizens. The United Nations have enshrined this freedom in their Declaration of Human Rights. Article 18 states, Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes the freedom to change his religion or belief, and freedom either alone or in community with others, and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. It's also important to note in context of today's debate that Article 19 goes on to state, everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. Mr. Speaker, I just had the opportunity to visit Egypt and Tunisia with several colleagues from this chamber over the winter break. And I was very encouraged to see the concerted efforts that the President of Egypt, Mr. El-Sisi, a devout Muslim himself, but he's making a very effective effort to bring people of different faith communities together. And it's not just words, Mr. Speaker, he's taking action to lead the way for his people. Mr. Speaker, it's particularly regrettable that the Liberal government chose not to extend the funding and strengthen the mandate of the Office of the Ambassador of Religious Freedom in Budget 2016. <clears throat> Canada's voice on issues of religious tolerance and increasingly intolerant world is now severely diminished. It was our party that established the Office of Religious Freedom under the leadership of Dr. Andrew Bennett in 2013. The creation of this office was very important and it was done in an Ahmadiyya Muslim mosque, a minority sect of Islam that is persecuted around the world. Canada's commitment to religious freedom and tolerance both at home and abroad was advanced greatly by the previous government, particularly by the Office of Religious Freedom. The mandate of the office had three broad components. Number one, to defend religious communities and monitor religious freedom through country strategies and analyses, interventions in support of communities at risk, and strengthening the capacity to monitor and promote religious freedom through specialized training. Number two, to promote religious freedom as a key objective of Canadian foreign policy through domestic advocacy and outreach, international advocacy and outreach, and whole of government coordination. And number three, the Office of Religious Freedom led the way internationally to protect freedom of religion and belief, as well as to promote Canadian values of tolerance and pluralism. This office stood up for the rights of all people. This office's external advisory committee included representation from many communities, such as atheist, Muslim, Sikh, Jewish, Hindu, and Baha'i. The office's ability to work with others earned the office great esteem internationally and within diaspora communities here in Canada. 
Through, though their mandate focused primarily on situations abroad, the office clearly had an effect here at home in Canada, with many minority communities who felt that this office was a beacon of hope to those who felt marginalized and persecuted. Dr. Andrew Bennett recently appeared at the Senate Standing Committee for Human Rights, discussing some of the accomplishments that this office made during his time as ambassador. He said, quote, under the office's religious freedom fund, which represented $4.25 million of our annual $5 million envelope, we sponsored over 20 projects that supported activities, addressed some of the root causes of religious persecution, and also helped those directly persecuted in over a dozen countries. We introduced training for Canadian diplomats on religious freedom and the role of religion in international affairs, a necessary component of our work. We engaged our allies in defending religious freedom internationally through the United Nations, such as the Human Rights Council, through the Special Rapporteur on Religious Freedom, and also through Third Committee of the General Assembly, and through a unique initiative that the Office of Religious Freedom brought forward, that is the International Contact Group on Freedom of Religion or Belief, which brought together over 20 like-minded governments committed to advancing religious freedom. These were not just our traditional like-minded governments. We also reached out to other countries such as Jordan, Morocco, Tunisia, Cameroon, Senegal, and Indonesia, who demonstrated a desire to improve the status of religious freedom in the world." End of quote. Mr. Speaker, let me share another quote from our former Ambassador Bennett that I feel is at the very heart of today's motion and is powerful in combating this growing hatred in Canada for people of all kinds of faiths and traditions. He said, quote, freedom of religion, as indicated in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and many other documents, is often placed as a first freedom, or we might say a foundational freedom. Why is this? I would argue that it comprehends that without recognizing the metaphysical need present in each of us to contemplate, who am I? Who am I in relationship to you? Who am I in relationship to the world in which I live? And who am I in relation to God or to a particular philosophy I choose to follow? Without recognizing that metaphysical need embedded within freedom of religion, we cannot then move on to give utterance to our beliefs, freedom of speech, gather with others to share those beliefs, freedom of assembly, or form groups of our fellow human beings who share similar beliefs so as to advance the common good. End of quote. Mr. Speaker, I truly believe that that is the end goal of every member in this House, to help advance the common good. And I look forward to taking on this endeavour with colleagues from all parties. So let me remind all members, indeed all Canadians who are watching today, of the inclusive nature of the motion before us today. Today's motion reads that the House recognize that Canadian society is not immune to the climate of hate and fear, exemplified by the recent and senseless violent acts at a Quebec City mosque, to condemn all forms of systemic racism, religious intolerance and discriminations of Muslims, Jews, Christians, Sikhs, Hindus, and other religious communities. And it goes on to instruct the Standing Committee on Heritage to undertake a study on how the government could develop a whole of government approach to reducing or eliminating all types, all types of discrimination in Canada while ensuring a community centered focus with a holistic response through evidence based policy making. The motion goes on, Mr. Speaker, but I see my time is up. Thank you. I urge all of my colleagues to support this motion, Mr. Speaker. It's in the best interest of all Canadians, including all faith groups that are represented in Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my Honourable Colleague for his speech. Uh, I've known him for many years and I know he's uh, an honest and a candid uh, uh, Member of Parliament and I want to ask him this question. He and his party in October <coughs> voted, along with the rest of the House of Commons, to condemn all forms of Islamophobia. So I want to ask him if he can share with us now why are they hesitant now? Why are they allergic to that word when they voted for it or for condemning it in October? The Honourable Member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Well, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my colleague for his comments and having worked with him on different committees over the years. Mr. Speaker, 
This member and all members in this House know that there are many uh, techniques, I would say, that are used to get passage of certain bills and issues in this House. And while he says that we voted unanimously for the motion, that is correct technically. However, Mr. Speaker, he will admit, he will know that very few members were in the House that particular day when it happened. So I'm not here to speak on behalf of other parts of this community. However, Mr. Speaker, when you look at the term Islamophobia, today in this House alone, we've probably heard three different supposed definitions of Islamophobia. There is no agreement on how to define that word. But Mr. Speaker, the big eye-opener for me was about a week ago when I attended a seminar put on by a group of Ahmadiyya Muslims here in Ottawa within the parliamentary precinct. And they pointed out to me, Mr. Speaker, that a Muslim sect in a Muslim community of Pakistan is under severe persecution. So how in the world could the term Islamophobia honestly be used with integrity to describe a situation like that where a Muslim government is persecuting its own Muslim minority within its own country? This the term Islamophobia has been misleading, it's not well defined, and Mr. Speaker, it's important that we follow through with the motion that our party has put forward today because it includes all faith groups, including Muslims. As has been pointed out today and the previous day when we were deb debating 103, that our job is to protect the faithful. Government's job is not to protect or promote a particular faith, but to protect the faithful. That's our goal with this motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Questions and comments, the Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and I want to thank the Honourable Member for his speech. And I, I know the Conservative Party, uh, certainly under uh, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, uh, took great leadership to, to fight hatred, uh, divisiveness, and persecution around the world. Great leadership in South Africa in uh, ending apartheid. You know, uh, given given our, our role internationally and historically. Does the member uh, see, with the troubling rhetoric and the, the shift in humanitarian policies in the United States under the new administration, uh, does he believe, does the member acknowledge that these developments actually help embolden those hateful views here in Canada? And does he agree that the government should speak out against these discriminatory policies, given our role and our influence in, in being leaders in the world? in fighting hate and divisiveness and persecution against groups that uh, uh, faced challenges uh, like we're seeing right now here in Canada. The Honourable Member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Well, Mr. Speaker, I, I was elected by the people of Kitchener-Conestoga to represent them. That happens to be a riding within Canada. I do not stand today to presume to tell other nations how they should direct their foreign policy. But, Mr. Speaker, if my colleague, and by the way, I want to thank my colleague and his party for agreeing to support this very important motion, this inclusive motion, which will address the issue before us today. But I want to remind him that, yes, I agree that we need to be at the forefront of this, and that is precisely why our party brought this motion forward to the House of Commons today, to include all faith groups. They're all included here. No, they're not all named, but it says other religions. It includes them all, Mr. Speaker. We have time for a very brief question. The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my honourable colleague from uh, Kitchener, Conestoga. In reading this motion, it seems to me that it goes more broadly than protecting all religions, and I support the, the, a, a broad approach. It says reducing or eliminating all types of discrimination in Canada. Would not he consider that should there be discrimination against atheists, that they were targeted and discriminated against, would not this motion also cover that kind of hate? The Honourable Member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Mr. Speaker, I'll thank my colleague for the question because I was hoping to have time to work that into my speech, but I ran out. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there are those who argue that, that atheism itself is a faith system. But, Mr. Speaker, I mentioned Dr. Andrew Bennett. He made a statement on the 14th of May 2015 where he clearly called out against the discrimination of an and the murder of an atheist blogger in Bangladesh. I am deeply troubled by the targeted killing of atheist blogger Ananta.